Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So that 3D printer that you're all so excited about. We are actually getting there. Uh, I made a few drawings of how I kind of want to make the parts. I don't know if this makes any sense to you, but uh, this line up here is kind of the, the box that it should be in. And I made this uh, this is actually the most important piece in the entire printer. It's a like a corner piece that will um, we have to put a bearing into this hole here, and we will have a shaft that's the entire length of the printer or the width, <laughs> if you could say it's uh, it's fifty by fifty. So yeah, I don't know what is width and length, but anyway. A bearing or well, a shaft going between two of these blocks so we'll have the exact same thing mirrored on this side here so that's why I only drew half of it uh, the other shaft here should be fixed in this hole and we have two of these uh, linear bearings mounted inside this block here and we have a stepper motor mounted beneath this uh, and this can slide back and forth and we have these two fixed shafts here and uh, this one will slide along here and on this we will mount the printing head so we have a belt going from this pulley to this block so when this motor spins it will move this back and forth and uh, there's a belt here and it should be fixed underneath here or on top maybe I don't know yet and when this spins we will move this back and forth I have enough room at the back of the box here that I can mount all the bearings and shafts and everything for the uh, print bed on the back here without it interfering with the print head. So the idea is that it, maybe it should be spaced a little bit more than I have drawn on the drawing here but the idea is we have two fixed shafts here and we have the spindle in the middle and uh, we'll just do like on the uh, on the flash forge where just uh, connects to the stepper motor in the bottom. I kind of decided to put the motor part of the extruder on the uh, back side of the printer so we only got the the hot end here and the in feed or whatever we should call it. So all the heavy parts will be on the back side and if if this is not as precise as I want I can always change this block and make it so that the motor will be on top of this. I went and got a few more parts that we will need. We will need some uh, cartridge heaters or we will need one cartridge heater for the extruder. But I got five because these uh, these do wear out. And uh, last time I totally forgot to get some of these closed belts because the one going to the motor, I, I cannot join that uh, somewhere because then that will interfere with the motor. Um, so lucky I thought about that before it was too late. I also got the filament guide tube and uh, these um, um, yeah fittings. It's a kind of push-in fitting, so I just push the tube in here, and it will uh, it will lock itself in place. So these uh, bearings that I got from China, uh, I showed them in the last video. Uh, I don't know why they call these bearings because um, yeah. Maybe they could be used for like drawers, lights, or for the like the hinge in your mailbox, maybe, but uh, not for anything useful. So I went and got some proper bearings instead, and uh, these are I don't remember what they called ISB, I think. Yeah, ISB. Uh, they are made in Italy. I don't know that much about them, but they. Uh, they feel decent. So I also went and made uh, these corner pieces that you saw in the drawing on the 3D printer. I just uh, made these in Blender and I have a, a kind of tutorial of how to use Blender on my other channel but yeah, maybe you can find something better. Uh, I haven't used it that much when I made the tutorial but it kind of gets you started anyway. Unfortunately, I went and put one of these uh, bad bearings in here, so 
unless I can remove this without damaging the part I will have to make a new one so I need to make a couple more of these so I have four of them two have to be mirrored and then we kinda got that sorted out I decided to use these long bolts uh, to fasten it and I need to make a 36 millimeter block on the back of this and I will just make that out of uh, two sheets of plywood so I will have a nut uh, maybe countersunk into the outside of the box so the nut will not be sticking out but it will be uh, you know it will have uh, something decent to grab into. I also went and made this uh, other piece that I showed you on the drawing that holds the stepper motor and it uh, I don't know if this is straight enough because you can see it, it does bend a little bit but uh, then again it's maybe it's not really that critical as long as they uh, they turn out identical so this can uh, slide back and forth on this and I mounted the uh, the linear bearings already so I went and made the other side as well and uh, for this one we will not need to have a motor on there so there's just uh, room for two bearings and we will have a, a shaft going through here with a bearing at, on each side and then we will have the pulley here to match up with the pulley on this one uh, we will have to shorten the shaft of course but uh, the problem is that I have to use ABS because these will get fairly close to the heated bed and um, PLA will melt if it gets too hot. So I had a few problems with the ABS cracking and this is not the first time that have happened. But uh, yeah, it, I can glue it but uh, this one is a lot better than the first one I made. Um, the first one here is, you can see it's a total mess. It's cracked all over the place. And uh, what I did to to kind of solve this was to uh, bump the temperature up to 260 degrees or something like that. The other one I printed with uh, 235. Yeah, I got that messed up. This one I printed with 235 and the good one with <laughs> 260. So what we'll have to do next is to add some bearings to this. And I'll just have to sand this uh, surface, uh, this face inside here, so that the bearing will fit without too much friction, but it, sh it should have a little bit of friction. Too much and we will crack the plastic, too little and the bearing could pop out again. Uh, so I deliberately made the hole a little bit undersized, um, so I have to have something to remove. Um, and these are also too tight so we'll have to make them a little bit larger as well and the same for these so for these holes I'll just uh, pass a drill bit through uh, that has the appropriate size so these should be 8 millimeters and I have an 8 millimeter drill here And we'll just remove these uh, first here with a countersink. I just did the large hole here as well, so now I only have to sand these parts. So let's get some sandpaper. So this could take some time. And uh, yeah, I'll just get back when we're ready to put the bearings in. So.
So I got this to a point where I can kind of push the bearings in uh, halfway with my fingers like this. Or maybe further if I really wanted to. But So let's hope this will not break the plastic when we press them in the last bit. And for that I will use the vise. So it uh, didn't look like we broke anything. This crack was there already. Uh, I did already put some super glue in the crack, but maybe I should kind of put a little bit more. And else, if it cracks, yeah, we'll just have to glue it again. But they uh, run pretty smooth. So let's try to get the shaft. So now comes the moment of truth. Uh, We'll have to see if these are aligned. Whoop, yep. At least it fits through and it spins. It's a little uh, harder to spin than if it's only inside one bearing. But I guess it should be twice as hard, but yeah, it's. It's okay. They are almost in line, these bearings. It's not that far off. So this uh, pulley should go on here. And I will put some washers in between here to line it up with the stepper motor on the other side. And I'll have to make a, like a, you know, like the first part of this so I can lock the shaft on this side so it cannot move uh, back and forth like this. So this will lock one side, and I'll make one to lock the other side. And that part is also done. And I am quite excited to see if these will make it crack. Um, I can kind of push them in there, but yeah, I don't know about the middle here, how tight it is. So that's just one way to find out. Oh, this one I could almost push in by hand, so this will not make it crack. It uh, looks like it was a success, but uh, we have to test with the shaft and see if we can uh, pass it through. So, here we go. So, this is the first one, and uh, yeah, last one. And it's uh, not that tight actually. The other one that I made were a little bit worse than this, but it uh, kind of got better when I moved it back and forth uh, like 20 times or something. Then it was uh, just about like this one is now. This uh, kind of stays the same. So. Maybe the other one, uh, one of the bearings in, in the other one got a little bit uh, misaligned. And when I moved this, it could kind of force it into place. Uh, it is plastic after all. So. 
Yeah. Then we just have to, to fit these in here. But we'll do that later. We have to make sure that uh, we get the correct distance between uh, this side of this one and the inner side of this one, which will go here. And they have to line up with the shafts going uh, this way, of course. So uh, the one going in here will be fixed. And the same for the one that have to go here. If we, and we need to get the distance correct uh, between these two blocks. Uh, yeah, but I'm sure we will be able to manage that. So we will have to print some more of these blocks. I managed to pull the bad bearing out of this one so we can reuse it. Um, it doesn't look like the plastic have taken any damage. <laughs> I didn't care about the bearing though. <laughs> And we are printing. Uh, sorry you can't see much, but... Uh, yep, now we'll just have to wait a couple of hours and we uh, only need to print two more. And through the magic of television we have three more parts. Yeah, and they are almost identical. It's just that Two of them have to be mirrored compared to the other two, of course. So now I'll just have to press some bearings into these and then we can uh, press them onto the shafts. And uh, now that these are in place, uh, that should be the only thing we need to consider beforehand, really. Uh, and we gotta get them uh, somewhat parallel, this one and the one that's going to sit here. But I'm sure we will figure that out somehow. So I just realized that it's a pain in the ass to sand something like this. Well, at least it takes a long time. So I kind of rigged up a tool here that can kind of help me do that. So I cut this down to where I can push it in a little bit by hand. And, uh, and I think we can do the rest in the vise. Yep, looks nice. And uh, this one should fit as it is because I already had one bearing in here. I can almost do that by hand actually. Maybe it's... Uh, maybe it's a little too loose. Yeah, I'll just uh, give it a drop of glue if I have any problems with it. But but I think it will be just fine because we only have these two belts going across. That's all the tension there is on this. So. And the last one. So now I'll just have to see if I can get these pressed on here. So the box is going to be 60 centimeters, and we have to subtract the width of uh, one plate. Because I'm going to join them in a square so one will overlap the other and the other way around in the other corner. I know the front is going to be looking a little weird that way. but. It's, uh, I think it's the best way of doing it, uh, considering uh, I have to make fewer parts that way. So it needs to be pressed another six millimeters. So I got it spot on, but it was a little bit tight at the end, so uh, I had to use a rubber mallet. Don't be violent, just uh, use a bigger hammer. So now we just have to be careful to put these on correctly. 
uh, this one uh, should be on the left side of the printer and it should have this uh, extra part here facing the side of the box. Then these blocks need to go here and this one here and we want this side to face this side so we'll have to put this here. So that one goes to this end and that one there. So now that I got this sorted out I can uh, rotate this around and now I can uh, lay it flat against the table and press these together. That way it will be as straight as we can get it. And that's not easy to do with the camera in the way. And again I pressed it as hard as I could but we still need about two millimeters so I'll just have to beat it with a hammer again. So I got the length of this one correct also and uh, we can uh, switch this back to its proper position. So now I should be able to push these uh, shafts into the blocks here so we can see if everything lines up. I think I just have to file the ends of these. I remember also doing that to the other two there, so no surprises. So now this distance from here to here should be uh, the same as the other one, minus 72 millimeters. So we got 60 centimeters minus 1.8 centimeter. That's the inside dimension of the case and uh, minus 7.2 centimeter. So there should be 51. But I get 51.3. So my guess is that this rod is actually longer than uh, 50 centimeters. So I'll just have to shorten it a little bit, if that's the case. Oh yeah, I bet it's the shafts. <laughs> Look at this. And they are flush on the other end. So, oops. I'll just have to grind them down. But anyway, it looks like it all fits together. And of course I need to press these in before I attach all this, but I can just pull it apart again. It's not stuck that hard into the bearings. Uh, the block that goes onto these two, I'll make that in two halves so I can screw it on afterwards, like a sandwich. Because then if I had, if something breaks here, that's where the extruder uh, is kind of sitting, so... Whoopsie! So if something breaks there, then I don't want to take the whole machine apart to change it. I don't quite know yet if I'm going to reinforce that with a like a plate of steel on top and bottom of that. Yeah, I think I'll just try and and print it in plastic and see how rigid it is and um, take it from there. I think I could just uh, assemble the box now actually, uh, and then I'll just have to cut uh, a hole in the front later on to kind of be able to access the printer. So I'm just assembling the box here and the way that I'm doing it right now is that I'm just screwing a screw from one plate into the end of the next one. That's not a very strong joint so I might have to put some angle brackets on the inside uh, but I don't have any that's straight so I'll either have to make some or buy some. So I'm just clamping a block of aluminium in the corner there and uh, make sure it's square or the square. So I'm sure if there's any woodworkers out there they will be screaming right now but <laughs> that's kind of the uh, only way for me to do it. I don't have any sophisticated tools for this so 
but we have to be a little careful when we screw a screw into this so I drill a hole into here first through everything then a bit larger hole for the first plate here and then I countersink the screw head that way it should be as good as we can get it with this uh, silly joints here I'm also going to add a plate in the bottom so that will also give it support but uh, yeah maybe I should add some angle brackets here in the top so I finished the box and it seems to fit so far uh, only by friction but so I think I'll pull this back out and uh, we'll go in and take a look in a bit more detail on how it's all gonna fit together with the belts and everything so what I just wanted to show here is that when the belt is engaged in these uh, teeth here that should be at the same height as this so when this gets pulled to the side here uh, the belt kind of stays level and uh, that's important I will make some kind of a clamp to uh, to hold this in place on top of the block here and I'll just uh, screw it into the plastic so you can imagine that if we have one pulley here and the block is down here and we got another pulley here and the belt goes like this then the pulley will try to pull the belt this way but if we keep it level like this the belt will just pull this way so if you got it like this up here you will get two problems the first being that if you move the block from say over here to over here the tension of the belt will not be uniform doing that travel the second and also the worst problem will be that the travel of the block itself will not be uniform so that the speed will uh, change if you rotate this at a constant speed then the horizontal travel of the block will not be the same here and here and we can uh, visualize that a little bit better if we say this this is the travel of the block and now the block is right here and we're pulling it from this point here so that will be the belt going here so to start with say we will we will pull at uh, at a constant rate so we could say we pull like uh, let's just say four centimeters so that will get us about 3.8 centimeters in that direction but uh, if we do it here say now the block is here now we're down to about 3.6 centimeters and if we do it again now we're down to 3.2 centimeters what this tells us is that the block will move fastest in the middle of the travel and towards the edges it will slow down and uh, if this angle here is very shallow say that the block here is only a millimeter below uh, the bottom of the belt here this effect will be very uh, negligible but uh, it will still be there I mean we could calculate it if we wanted but yeah but I just uh, measured the pulley here and designed the parts so that the bottom of the belt will line up with this so there will only be the error introduced by the printer and that will not be much it will be less than a millimeter But uh, just something to keep in mind so there is uh, one last thing that I wanted to show you uh, that I have made and it's the business end of the extruder so hopefully this one down here will be the hot end and it will cool down enough uh, doing the length of this bolt that this part up here can keep it cold um, and I got this rather large uh, block of aluminium here 
and I'm planning to mill some uh, slots in this and add a fan here too, just to cool it a bit further. I don't know if it's necessary, but just to be on the safe side. And I don't know if this uh, steel bolt here will uh, will do the job at all, because uh, some of the commercial extruders uh, that you can buy have uh, like a Teflon tube inside. I didn't think the Megabot had that, uh, and I'm still not sure, but I see that almost all the other extruders have this Teflon tube inside. But anyway, that's only one way to find out, really. I made it so that it will take one of these cartridge heaters, and uh, you can put a set screw in here to kind of lock it in place. And it should probably be filled with some kind of uh, thermal compound or something. Uh, one way that this could be optimized a little bit would be to have this set screw in, an, in a different position because now I'm pressing it against the back wall of this and we, it's only connected with these two thin uh, pieces here. If I could somehow press it against the larger block that would be a little bit better but I think this will do. There's a little hole for the thermistor and we got the quick disconnect for the filament guide tube. And I don't know if you will be able to see that there's... Uh, you can just see the the light down the tube there. And we got the nozzle at the other end. Well, the alignment of all the holes in this uh, are terrible because uh, I only had a very shitty drill press that could kind of... It had like half a centimeter of... I wouldn't call it play, but you could kind of wiggle the uh, the drill chuck about half a centimeter back and forth if you grabbed it. And so when you press the drill down into the workpiece, it could kind of slide back and forth. So there was really no way I could uh, keep these in the center. The last ones I actually started with uh, just a hand drill and then finished them. And some of them even still slipped a little bit. And I got tired of sawing these out with the hacksaw because that's not <laughs> very fast when you're dealing with aluminium. So I tried to um, to mill it out instead. I had some small some bits that came with the Dremel, and I mounted one of them in the drill press and just passed the uh, the workpiece through. It actually worked out pretty good, but the first pass I did on the wrong side of the line there, so that's why you see this. But it's just a, like a prototype anyway, so maybe I'll. See if I can do it a little bit better. But uh, first I need some better tools, that's for sure. Uh, I will probably regret this later on, but shouldn't we try and see if it works? I just put a bit of the filament guide tube in here and I got some filament so we can try it. And I'll have to install the heater, of course. There's no temperature regulation on this, so I'll just have to kind of slowly ramp up the voltage until we start seeing the filaments melt. So, we got that in there nice and tight, and uh, oops, I loosened the hot end there. And now it's a little off axis, but it'll be okay for a test. So, we're at about 18 watts here and I start to feel it warm up. It's about 60 degrees now, I think. We have to bump it up a little bit further, but uh, I'll just see how things go. Now it's, yeah, it's hot now. So I went and grabbed a piece of ABS plastic here. Uh, just, uh, I think that will be the easiest to clean out if I have to do so. And uh, the cold part here is still, uh, yeah, like 30 degrees, I think. And this is, uh, uh, yeah, more than 100 degrees. So the spit is boiling there. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this. in there and yeah you can see we are indeed extruding plastic 
it's not very warm yet but uh, we can bump it up a little bit so I just gave it another couple of watts here and uh, oh, this uh, this part is getting I would say like 35 degrees but it's getting warm all the way up here also so I think it's not that bad I think I can cool that down with a fan you can see it's still not quite warm enough so we'll give it another couple of watts so now we're up to 34 watts and the element there or the cartridge heater is rated for 40 watts so we should be getting there yeah now it's it's doing its thing I'll get this a little closer to the table so you can you can see it better I think it's still a little hard to push out no no now it's coming yeah now that's uh, almost like the flash watch I think in terms of uh, pressure on the filament can you hear that I think it's getting <laughs> a little too warm now <laughs> and now it just oozes out I don't I don't even need to apply pressure anymore and yeah, you can see it's a lot thicker than it should be so it's getting too warm and I'll shut it down but uh, as you can see it does work but um, yeah I don't know if it will work with PLA because if this tube gets too hot and it starts melting up here that could uh, block the whole thing so maybe I'll have to redesign it but we'll definitely try and test this in the printer and see if it works so now that this cooled down I'm quite curious to see if if the filament actually melted inside this steel nut here uh, so far so good yeah I'm not getting that apart really easy without warming it up but you can see there's there's a fair distance down there that's not uh, covered in plastic if you can see that I don't know if it shows up on the camera so you can see it's it's about uh, at this point here the plastic starts to melt and I think that's acceptable uh, the only problem could be if you get something stuck here that will not melt again uh, so it cannot feed the filament through but I don't know we'll have to test that uh, when we get the printer assembled uh, and we still need a lot of parts of course so it'll take a while until we can see if we have to make another one and this was just the first mug up anyway so uh, yeah I kind of expected that I had to make a few changes so I think this is pretty much the end of this video and in the next video I'll have this part ready so that we can get this whole assembly uh, attached to the box and I'll also make some kind of a jig to uh, drill these holes uh, where this is screwed in so I get them precise I will also have to make the uh, 36 millimeter pieces that go behind here uh, and I'll need to grind the shafts down a little bit as we discussed. When all that is done and we got it mounted in the box we can kind of take a look at where we can place this stepper motor and where we can place this uh, C direction assembly kind of stuff here and I can make up my mind how I want to make these blocks. Anyway if you like this video so far please give this one the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. Uh, thanks a lot for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. See you.